Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome back to the second segment of Shabbat Service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center in QSA. We pray that this is a blessing to everyone who is with us today and for those who will listen in later in on the archives. This is Saturday, January 15th, 2022 on the Gregorian calendar. And in the year of 5782, it is Shabbat. 13 and this is the day that the lord has made we will be glad and rejoice in it now um just to recap a little on our announcements as i mentioned we are doing the uh, a bible study with the english standard version now we have completed um using the messianic jewish family bible tree of life version um, we had done that for almost two years solid so we have just begun um the English Standard Version, uh, abbreviated ESV. So in this upcoming week, we will be reading from the book of Genesis. We are up to chapters 12 to 23. And also, um, the 17th is actually, um, the 17th of January is actually the 15th of, of Shabbat, which is a, a the holiday known as the New Year of the Trees. And to, to Bishabat, um, and so that's on the 15th of Shabbat. So we'll have a little mini service there, and of course with the altar call, um, just to kind of tell you what that's all about um, and why it is important. Um, so that is that is up and coming in this coming week, and also we meet live in real time on our dedicated freeconferencecall.com channel, which everyone is is welcome to join us. You can join by web. You can join by phone. You can join by Wi-Fi data. I will be posting, you know, I do post the links. You can find the links. They're all over our social media, the our, our group pages on uh, MeWe, on Gab, on USA.life, and on Facebook. So, uh, and if of course, if you have any questions, you can reach out to Pastor Nall or myself. We use this channel um, as fellowship and we do meet live in real time so you can come talk to us and join with us uh, we actually you know fellowship we give each other encouragement support we pray one for another we've used this um, as teaching we've hosted praise and worship leaders we've hosted writers in the past so um, there's a lot that we do with this channel so I'm just gonna make it make this announcement brief come join us Tuesday nights uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you can't get right in uh, within, you know, within the first half hour, that's fine. We're still there. Um, this past week, uh, you know, well, actually, most of the time we're there till at least 10, 1030. Um, we have been there as long as one o'clock in the morning if it need be. So uh, pop in um, and say hi. Um, if you want to make sure that you can join the channel you can try the links um, ahead of time um, there are uh, specific numbers for countries if you're joining by phone I, I believe it's the in-country number you can find your country um, these are not toll calls even though it says toll a uh, toll um, this when you click onto the link for the phone uh, this is actually actually what was given to us as the free numbers the free the free numbers to use um, because I think I do believe even USA it says toll call now we have a number just for USA alone um, the access code is the same for all countries so you can try by phone um, there the countries that are not listed I would suggest trying by the by the web link and yes it is safe to download the apps for either your computer or the phone and then run them and just follow the prompts you'll come into uh, you know the conference area and you'll see that there's a built-in microphone there's a chat center you know, there's a chat section um, when you join by web so um, I would try that if your country is not listed on the list of phone and of course then there's the option it's a little bit more expensive is to use your data to join um, but we'd love to see you come and uh, join us, and and it is it is really 
a wonderful thing to fellowship with one another. And that is what we are called to do as the body of Messiah. So I'm going to open this up to our opening prayer for this segment. And we are going to um, get started um, with Shabbat service. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the breath in our lungs. We thank you for the ability to come together. And we thank you that you have sanctified a day of rest for us. And you showed us how important that it is. And we are here to honor you, Father God. We're here and we're so humbled to be in your presence. We ask your Holy Spirit to continue to lead and guide us through the rest of Shabbat service and bless us with your awesome, awesome, awesome guidance and instruction and teaching. We ask that you open the eyes of our heart and the ears of our heart and also make us receptive vessels that we can take in your word, we can digest it, and we can make it part of who we are as we walk with you. We love you, Father God. We worship, adore you, and we give you all the praise. You are the only one worthy of praise. You are are, um, an amazing, awesome, and majestic God. You are our Father. We love you in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And in the ancient days, the high priest sounded the shofar, and we're going to do that right now. And that was to gather the people to worship. And what, what we're going to be doing then is pausing and doing praise and worship. I'm going to pause it now for you to go and listen to some anointed praise and worship songs. As I mentioned in the first segment, I do post songs uh, suggested for you um, on the on the social media platforms. I cannot incorporate that into this upload because of copyright infringements, but I can post them directly from uh, from an artist site, you know, to actually uh, suggest. And these are very anointed praise and worship songs and and do support these um, wonderful uh, praise and worship leaders. They, they're doing such an awesome job in, in giving praise and worship to our Father. So um, absolutely um, listen to some of their music. It's, it, it's wonderful. So, um, But if you have your own praise and worship songs that you listen to, by all means, this is the time that we're going to do that. Praise and worship is so important. Uh, it's it's so intricately important. Whenever Benai Israel went into battle, um, the tribe of Judah went before them, and Judah means praise. So we give praise to our Father. We put praise first. And yes, that and I have shown time and time again, and we saw that in the Torah and the half Torah that He will fight our battles. All we need to do is trust him, give him praise and give him honor. And this is a time that we live in, uh, that we're living in now that we need to be doing those things too and trusting in him. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to pause it now for you to listen to some praise and worship. Then we will come back with the Brit Kadasha scripture readings and we'll do a recap there. I uh, do a little, you know, do a, a little closing prayer and then open it up to the altar call and then bring Shabbat to a close for this week. The first scripture readings we have in the Brit Kadashah, which is the New Testament or the New Covenant, it comes from Matthew, um, Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 36. And remember, um, we made mention of Peter's walk on the water. So this is that 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 segment, testing Peter's faith to walk on water. Right away, Yeshua made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he sent the crowds away. After he had sent the crowds away, he went up on the hillside by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. 
but the boat was already a long way from land, tossed around by the waves, for the wind that was against it. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Yeshua came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost, and they cried out with fear. But immediately Yeshua spoke to them, saying, Take courage, I am. Don't be afraid. Answering, Peter said to him, Master, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. And Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water to go to Yeshua. But seeing the wind, he became terrified and beginning to sink, he cried out, saying, Master, save me. Immediately, Yeshua reached out his hand and grabbed him. And he said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When I got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, You really are Ben Elohim, the Son of God. After they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Yeshua, they sent word into all the surrounding region, and they brought to him all those who were in bad shape and kept begging him that they might just touch the the, the zit, zit zit and that's the, the the fringe it is spelled t z i t z i t and these are simply the fringes on the garment and all who touched it were cured the next scripture readings we have are from the gospel of john chapter 6 verses 1 through 71 we are going to actually do the entire chapter is a pretty long chapter new manna in the wilderness now you can see how all of this parallels from back in the torah and the half torah uh, thinking about what you know that manna was raised down for for benai israel afterwards yeshua went away to the other side of the sea of galilee also known as the sea of tiberias a large crowd kept following him because they were watching the signs he was performing on the sick then yeshua went up the mountain side and sat down there with his disciples. Passover, the Jewish feast, was near. Lifting up his eyes and seeing a large crowd coming to him, Yeshua said to Philip, Where will we buy bread so these may eat? Now Yeshua was saying this to test him, for he knew what he was about to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii isn't enough to buy bread for each to get a little bit. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what's that for so many? Yeshua said, Make the people recline. There was, there was much grass in the area. So the men reclined above, above about 5,000 in number. Then Yeshua picked up the loaves. And having, having given thanks, he distributed bread to everyone who was reclining. He did the same with the fish, as much as they wanted. When the people were full, Yeshua said to his disciples, Gather up the leftovers so nothing is wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with broken pieces from the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had finished eating. When the people saw the sign that Yeshua performed, they began to say, This is most certainly the prophet who is to come into the world. Realizing that they were about to come and seize him by force to make him king, Yeshua withdrew against the mountain himself alone. The Savior on the sea. Now when the evening came, Yeshua's disciples went down to the sea. Getting into a boat, they set out to cross the sea toward Capernaum. But now it had become dark and still Yeshua had not come to them. A great wind began to blow, stirring up the sea. After they had rowed about 25 or 30 stadia they catch sight of yeshua walking on the sea approaching the boat they were terrified that yeshua says to them i am don't be afraid then they wanted to take him into the boat and right away the boat reached the shore where they were headed the bread from heaven the next day the crowd remaining on the other side of the sea realized that no other boat had been there except the one and that yeshua hadn't gone into the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Some other boats from Tiberias came close to the place where they had eaten. 
the bread after the master had given thanks. So when the crowd realized that neither Yeshua nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and set off for Capernaum to find them. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said, Rabbi, when did you get here? Yeshua responded to them, to them Amen, Amen, I tell you, you seek me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate all the bread and were filled. Don't work for food that spoils, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him, God the Father has put the seal of approval. Then they said to him, What shall we do to perform the works of God? Yeshua answered them, This is the work of God to trust in the one he sent. So they said to him, Then what sign do you perform so that we may see and believe you? What work do you do? Our father ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, Out of heaven he gave them bread to eat. Yeshua answered them, Amen, amen, I tell you, it isn't Moses who has given you bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven, for the bread of God is the one coming down from heaven and giving life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread from now on. Yeshua said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I told you that you have seen me, yet you do not believe. Everyone the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone coming to me I will never reject. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. Now this is the will of the one who sent me, that I lose not one of all he has given me, but raise each one on the last day, on that last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and trusts in him may have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Some of the Judeans started to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from the heaven. They were saying, Isn't this Yeshua, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Yeshua answered, Stop grumbling among yourselves. No one can come to me unless my father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets. They will all be taught by God. Everyone who has listened and learned from the Father comes to me. Now that anyone has seen the, not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God, he has seen the Father. Amen, amen. I tell you, he who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Yeshua said to them, Amen, amen, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in yourselves. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who eats of me will also live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like the bread of your fathers ate and then died. He who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while teaching at the synagogue of, in Capernaum. Fall out from a hard teaching. So when many of his disciples heard this, they said, this is a hard teaching. Who can listen to it? But Yeshua knew his disciples were murmuring. So he said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man going back up to the place where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is of no benefit. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. Yet some of you do not trust. Yeshua knew from the beginning who were the ones who did not trust, as well as which one would betray them. Then he told them, For this reason I told you that, that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by the Father. From this time many of his disciples left and quit walking with him. So Yeshua said to the twelve, You don't want to leave also, do you? Simon Peter answered him, 
Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have trusted and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Yeshua answered them, Didn't I choose you, the twelve? Yet one of you is the adversary. Now he was speaking of Judah, or Judas Iscariot, and, and, and in, in uh, the TLV, he's known as Jude, Judah, the son of Simon of Creo, for he, one of the twelve, was about to betray him. Now, Yeshua was not talking about cannibalism here. Uh, as we know, um, the Lord's Supper is a sim uh, the the bread that we use the 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 wine or or grape juice that we use is a symbol uh, to remember him, and it is instituted in the upper room uh, with his disciples. The last scripture reading we will be covering is First Corinthians. And we're, we're going to go to chapter 10, verses 1 through 18. Warnings from history. For I do not want you to be ignorant, brothers and sisters, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea. They were all immersed into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and all ate the same spiritual food. And all drank the same spiritual drink, for they were drinking from a spiritual rock that followed them, and the flock was Messiah. I'm sorry, the rock was Messiah. So you can see how this was a parallel. The rock um, that Moses struck um, is being addressed here as Messiah. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them for they were struck down in the desert as you're going to as, as we go further on uh, each week and we see what happens in the wilderness wanderings uh, you're going to see that as we when we get to the end in, in Deuteronomy um, there's a whole new generation that was waited for to be able to go into the promised land we're going to see as we move forward where where they lost where they, where they did not hang on to their faith and listen to a bad report. Now, these things happen as examples for us, so we wouldn't crave evil things just as they did. Do not be idolaters, idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play, and let's not commit sexual, sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. And let's not test the Lord as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents. And let's not grumble as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroying angel. Now these things happened to them as an example and it was written down as a warning to us on whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, let the one who thinks that he stands watch out and he doesn't fall. No temptation has taken hold of you except what is common to mankind, but God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can handle. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape so you will be able to endure it. Peace with the Lord, not with idols. Therefore, my dearly loved ones, flee from idolatry. I speak as to sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say. The cup of blessing that we bless isn't it a sharing of Messiah's blood? The bread which we break, isn't it a sharing of Messiah's body? Since there is one bread, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one bread. Consider physical Israel. Those who eat the sacrifices, aren't they partners in the altars? Now, I'm actually going to take it to the end of this chapter, continuing on. What am I saying then? That an idol sacrifices anything or that an idol is anything? No, I'm saying that what the pagans sacrifice is to demons and not to God. And I don't want you to become partners with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? We are not stronger than he, are we? Everything is permitted, but not everything is helpful. Everything is permitted, but not everything builds up. Let no one seek his own good, 
but the good of his neighbor. Eat whatever is sold in the meat market without raising question of conscience. For the earth is the Lord's and its fullness. If an unbeliever invites you over and you want to go, eat whatever is set before you without raising questions of conscience. But if anyone says to you, this is from an idol sacrifice, do not eat it for the sake of the one who informed you and for the sake of conscience. Not your own conscience, I mean, but the other person's. For why is my freedom judged by another's conscience? If I partake with thankfulness, why am I denounced because of something I give thanks for? Therefore, whether you eat or drink or what, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense either to Jewish or Greek people or to God's community, just as I also try to please everyone in everything, not seeking my own benefit, but the benefit of many so that they may be saved. So as we go through the recapping, you see um, what happened in parallel to, um, you know, to, um, with the Torah, you know, um, there was always, the, the Adonai rescues his people. We see that in the Torah. We see manna from heaven uh, is given to them to feed them. Um, we see a song that is sung. And in the half Torah, again, we see that um, Adonai comes through for the people. Um, and um, he gives instruction. The instruction is followed and um, there is victory. And that was with Deborah. And we went through, we went through the explanation of that. And there's a song sung there. So then, when we go to the Brit Kadashav readings, we see Peter walking on the water, um, which also is a parallel um, to to the trust and the faith. And when he took his eyes off of Yeshua, he started to sink. So that is a message to us: we need to keep our eyes focused on on our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. Um, and keep our heads above water, and we're living in such trying times that we absolutely need to lean in to him. There's a number of parallels between the Torah, the half Torah, and the Gospel of John. Um, when we, we talked about the walking on water, um, the, the, the Yeshua called himself the living bread, um, alluding to the bread of life, alluding to the giving of the manna and Yeshua's statement and all that believe in him shall never thirst, never hunger. Um, and, you know, when we talk about, when we, when we look at the, the Torah portion, um, the people were, were never lacking for anything. I don't know. I did take care of them in the flesh and Yeshua has promised us spiritually, you know, in, that we will never lack, we will never thirst, we will never be hungry, uh, we will be well taken care of. Um, so um, Yeshua is the source of life. Um, Yeshua was the source of life when Benai Ezra wandered through through the wilderness. Yeshua was the living water then, just as he is today. The cup of Miriam we use as our Passover Seder, then it commemorates commemorates the presence of Yeshua um, as, as uh, B'nai Israel trek their way to the promised land. And Paul draws further analogies to warn uh, the Corinthian people when we did the, the, the reading in Corinthians against the sin of idolatry. So there's a lot of parallels here. So we're going to close this in our closing prayer. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your most powerful word. We thank you for Yeshua. We thank you for the parallels that you have given us and how, how the Torah, the half Torah, and the Brit Kadesha all connect. The Old Testament with the New Testament is all connected. And we see how the parallels fall into play leading us to be ready to, to see Yeshua for who he really is. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the living water, the bread of life. He is everything to us. Thank you for him, Father. We thank you that you sent him to redeem us, to make everything right so that we could 
be with you. And we do come to the Lord's table. We do this in remembrance of him until he comes again to rule and reign. We thank you so much. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. And that brings us to the altar call. Yeshua was also preparing the people for what was to come, and he already, he knew, um, as we read, he knew who was going to betray him. Um, and that that was something that he had already known. But Yeshua died for us, and Yeshua is his Hebrew name, it's Jesus. Um, salvation can only be achieved through Yeshua. Salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences of sin. And the wages of sin are death. Sin cannot stand before a holy God. Prior to Yeshua coming, there was a sacrificial system that was in place and that involved sacrificing perfect lambs. They had to be blemish-free and perfect. Yeshua, when he came, he is second of the Godhead. He was perfect, sinless, blameless. The only one that who, that could um give of his life to sacrifice for all of humanity, past, present, and future. Yeshua took all of the sins, all of the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all of sin that comes short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. We cannot do this on our own. Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And the world will tell you lies. They will, the world will tell you many lies. The world will tell you, you can, you know, there's many paths to heaven, and that's just not true. Yeshua is the only way. And that's because he came and he died for us, and he, he is the only one that could redeem us and save us from that eternal separation from the Father because of sin. He's the only one that could take away the sin of the world. And he loved us that much that he did that. Father God has, when he created humanity, he gave humanity free choice. So he's not imposing that on us. I mean, the world will try to impose all kinds of things, but the world does not have Mankind does not have right to impose anything on us when, when, when the creator of the world does not do that. However, there are consequences. And choose this day whom you will serve. Um, if you reject Yeshua, um, you will not get to heaven. That is, that is a given because he died for us. He loved us that much. So call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. He's the only one that can save you. No one can save you. You can't save yourself. No one, no, no other person can save you. Yeshua is the only one that can do that. The other thing that he that that occurred before he went to the cross is the Roman soldiers beat him, and uh, this is where we get that um, Bible passage that says. By his stripes I am healed, because one of those stripes he took also our illnesses and afflictions. So a lot was heaped on Yeshua um, for us, um, and it he died for our sins because he was not um, sinful at all. He had no sin, and everything was heaped on him. First John chapter one verse nine says, "If we confess our sins." He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So now, if you've never accepted Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, I don't know what you're waiting for. You look at the world that we live in today, it is a mess. And if you're walking this world without Jesus, without Yeshua, you're lost. But the good news is you can be found. You can certainly um you can certainly accept him as your Lord and Savior. And you can do this by saying this prayer with me today, if you're ready to do that. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I'm a sinner. 
and I have great need of a savior because I know I can't save myself. I know I can't buy my way to heaven. I know there's nothing I can do to save myself. And I'm, I'm, I'm now understanding that Yeshua, Jesus, loved me so much that he came to this earth and died for me on a cross, a very cruel death. He died on a cross. He was buried. And he rose again and he's at your right hand. And, I, and I'm understanding he's coming back again to rule and reign as king of kings and lord of lords. I don't want to be left behind. I want to become a child of God. And I understand. I understand that I need to repent and ask forgiveness of my sins. And I ask you now, Yeshua, please forgive me of anything that I have done. Anything known and unknown, I confess it now, and I'm asking for forgiveness and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I thank you for what you've done, and I accept the gift of salvation and eternal life. I thank you. I believe you are the King of Kings. I believe you are the Lord of Lords, and I'm asking you to come live inside of me. Rule and reign in my heart. Please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me, in all of your ways for the rest of my life. I believe with all my heart that through you and you alone I am saved. I am healed by your stripes. I am born again, set free, delivered from sin and their consequences. And I believe through you and you alone, Yeshua, Jesus, I am healed and now healthy of mind, body, and soul. In Jesus, Yeshua's precious, mighty, powerful name, amen and amen. And if you have said that prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I am going to encourage you to get it into a Bible-based church or a Messianic congregation. One that teaches and preaches directly from the word of God and not from the lips of man and the words of man and what's out there in the world and mixing, mixing in pagan beliefs and all kinds of doctrines of, of that that are not of God. How do you know that you're getting sound doctrine? Get a copy of the Bible yourself and start reading it. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you as you read the Bible. Holy Spirit's an absolute excellent teacher and there are wonderful things that he'll bring to your attention as you're reading the Bible. But reading the Bible is getting to know the heart of our Father in heaven. And now that you are born again, you are part of the family of God. You're a child of God and you have a heavenly Father and you may call him Abba. What a wonderful, wonderful gift. The creator of the world is now your Abba, your Father. And he loves you. And he puts his name on you. He seals you with his Holy Spirit. So get to know who he is. Have a relationship with him. He had a relationship with Adam and Eve in the garden. Talked to them every single day. He was trying. And as we, we're, we're going to go further, both in the Bible study and, and in our Torah, as we see um, B'nai Israel being led of Moses, Abba Father tried to reestablish that connection, that relationship with the people, and they chose to let Moses have the relationship, and they got the law. So they said they would do whatever that um, Adonai told them to do. However, as we see in the Bible, there, there are many characters in the Bible um, that have lived um, many years ago that did have relationship with, with God. They did talk to God. King David is a perfect example. He had a beautiful relationship with, with God. Uh, he made some mistakes, and, and he was very repentant of that. And um, he was absolved. He was forgiven of his sin, yes. Uh, but he, he did have a beautiful, he loved God with all his heart. So that is one character. Um, Joseph, we've, we've, we've read about Joseph. He loved the Lord. He would not sin against the Lord, even though, you know, um, Potiphar's wife was kind of threw herself on him. 
he, he was not going to, to go against what God wanted for him. So he fled. He did not, he did not succumb to that temptation. So, um, so there's, there's, there's many, 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 um, who have lived before us that had a relationship with God and through Yeshua, that, that, that veil, uh, when Yeshua died on the cross, um, there, uh, there in the tabernacle experience, we're going to actually, uh, get into that, not, not into the too far off future. So you're going to see that there's the outside court, there's the holy place, and then there's the holy of holies where the Ark of the Covenant, uh, where, where God would descend, you know, and only the high priest could go in there. Um, so there was a veil, there was a veil, there, there was a covering um, that separated the holy place from the holy of holies. And only the high priest could go in there. And the high priest had to absolutely have his heart right with God before he went went in there or he could be struck dead. There was like bells on, on the bottom of his garment. Um, so actually the other priests could hear that, you know, he was okay as long as they heard the bells. But, the, you know, but if they didn't, I mean, that could mean a bad thing for the high priest. When Yeshua died on the cross, there was a great earthquake and the veil was ripped from from top to bottom, which um, says a lot that our hearts need to be right. First of all, um, we need to repent of any sin. We need to be sure that we have nothing because sin cannot stand before a holy God. But by that veil being ripped from top to bottom, we can we can boldly go go forward to the throne of God and and speak with Father God ourselves. Of course, Yeshua is always our intercessor. He is, he is our, our high priest now, but God wants relationship with his children. So talk to God. He hears you. He hears you. He, there's nothing that goes unnoticed with God. And remember, God has a perfect plan and a perfect timing. And there's purpose for everything. And his ways are higher than ours. We may not always understand. Um, and it may be frustrating at times because, you know, um, when we see the evil and the wickedness in this world. And we know that God is on the move now today. And, you know, we're like, you know, <laughs> we are like children, very impatient and waiting on the will of God. But he has a t perfect timing. And he will get this whole mess under control. And there are things in our world that will never be completely perfect until Yeshua comes and straightens everything out. Um, and I'm going to encourage people to not get into denominational battles. There's not one denomination that's better than the other. Um, let's face it, you know, we're not denominations in heaven. I think we need to lose that. We need to come together as a body of Messiah. If you're born again and saved, you're part of the family of God. That's all you need to be. Um, I think the denominations divide us even more. And if you look at how our world is today, there's so much division, so much division that it is insane. And a house divided cannot stand. So we as the body of Messiah, we need to come together so we can stand boldly against the enemy. And our enemy is not flesh and blood. It is it is a spiritual battle between wickedness, the, the wickedness of the evil one and, and the wickedness in high places. Because the evil one is it has, has fooled many people in high places. And they're listening to the whispers of the lies. And we pray for those that are lost because they are really lost. But again, we look at the example of Pharaoh and, and the fact that Pharaoh's heart was hardened to God. Some of the people, unfortunately, have hardened their hearts. Will they turn their hearts? Will they soften? Um, that's not for us to judge. I mean, they do have free will and free will and free choice like we all do. God gives every, he loves all of humanity. Even those that are doing wicked things, it grieves his heart. 
because he created all of us in his image. Yet they're serving other gods. They're serving the evil one as well. And it grieves his heart. But yes, the delay is, is on for our Messiah at this point because he doesn't want anybody to perish. So we, as the body of Messiah, we as born-again believers need to engage in the Great Commission. We want our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords to return. Uh, we say Maranatha, you know, we say, Bo Yeshua, Bo, come, Jesus, come. But there are many that would perish right now. There are many that would perish right now if he came. And imagine when you were not saved. Some of you just got saved now if you have said that prayer. And if he would have come before this this moment, he would have been lost too. So we need to we need to be about the Father's business. We need to get that in our head that that is one of the most important things that we can do is to share Yeshua with everyone that that we can possibly share share uh, so that they too can get saved. I'm going to encourage you, as I said, to get into a messianic congregation or a a biblical church one that reads out of the bible um, but get also getting a copy of the bible go to bible hub bible gateway and you can decide on what ver version that you would like and then commit to reading it i'm just gonna have you steer away from some of the 21st century bibles that have tampered with the word of god though the queen james version being one of them that is not a divinely inspired bible it's just a book um, anybody that tampers with the word of God, um, we're not to do that. God is the creator of all things. And he gave us the Bible. He you, He selected um, 40 plus individuals over the course of 1600 years and breathed this word into them. They were they were selected. So not just any any. Joe Schmo can come come along and create a Bible. So you know, be careful um, not to to read those um, because they, they are twisting the word of God and it's not truth. They have subtracted things that they don't like. And, you know, we do have cherry pickers in our world today, um, but it doesn't make it right. God is the same yesterday, today and forever. So if he decreed that something was a sin, it's still a sin today. He's not going to change his mind just because people want to live in a, live a sinful lifestyle and there's no sugar coating that that is the truth and I'm not going to I'm not going to talk to you about untruths and and rationalize things it, you know if God has called it out God has called it out and I'm not here to do my will or anybody else's will but the will of God um, so the truth is going to come out of my mouth. So amen. Amen. So get a copy of the Bible, um, get involved in some, um, small groups with, with a congregation that you have joined, because the more you learn and the more you learn about our father in heaven, um, the more you grow. And the Bible is our spiritual food. So that is all I'm going to say on that. And we're going to bring Shabbat to a close for this week. As Shabbat draws to an end, the aroma of sweet spices lingers as the flame is extinguished until next week. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord at a night is my strength and my song. He has also become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. And blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the various spices. And blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the lights of fire. And blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who distinguishes between holy and secular. The blessing, the ironic blessing, 
or what is known as the priestly blessing is biblical, very biblical. And this has become like the benediction in all Christian churches and synagogues. It, it may simply say in your bulletins uh, each week, the benediction, but it is the ironic blessing or the priestly blessing. And this is found in Numbers chapter 6, verse 22 to 27. And then I spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and his sons, uh, and they shall put my name on them. Uh, he was, he, he gave specific words, which we're going to speak over you as a blessing. Because if you are born again and um, saved, you are a member of the family of God. And this blessing is for you. Absolutely. Um, so there's specific words and Father God likes to put his name on us and seal us with his Holy Spirit. So in Hebrew, it goes like this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Amen and amen. And may you have peace, the peace that passes all understanding. When you're, you're, you're going through times of trouble, and we all go through times of trouble, uh, this is a time of great testing, as, as as we can probably all attest. Lean into the Lord. He will wash you, wash over you with shalom. And we really, we really need that at, at this time um, in our in our individual lives. So Shavuot Have a good week, everyone. And God bless each and every one of you. And as I said, if you can if you can join us Tuesday evening, that would be wonderful. Um, in the upcoming week again, we're going to do a little service on the New Year of Trees, which is the 15th of Shabbat. That is our holiday for this month. And we're also going to continue on with the Bible study. And we're in the book of Genesis this week. So God bless each and every one of you. And have a great week.